Hi, I'm Julia and uh, you are currently watching a video on my YouTube channel. Uh, today I am going to use my colours that I have made. Uh, they are called the Almoge set. They each have a name, a, a traditional Swedish name. Uh, but the set is Almoge and uh, when you um, purchase the, um, the set you will get uh, one of these little info sleeves with uh, the information and then also a bit about the colors. So I can just read you very quickly. Um, so what is Almoge you might ask? The Almoge style is within culture, history and antiquities a name for the rustic style that was common in Swedish farming community about 1650 to 1900. Um, yeah, so I decided to make this watercolor set with eight different colors uh, to represent the the Almoge, the style, the colors, the houses that that I have grown up with. Here in Sweden, where I live, out in the woods, um, a lot of the houses look very similar. <laughs> you might recognize them. Um, I have a few examples here, and we are going to draw some uh, today. Uh, all pretty much having the same kind of colors on the roof, on the walls, um, white trim all around, but they all look so very unique. And uh, I decided to design this set and I'm going to read this little spot right here. So starting making watercolor paints, I have dreamed of making a, a set of colors that truly are Sweden. For me, there is nature and the houses. I wanted the old pigments and recipe to be able to make something new. And that something new will be whatever I decide to paint and whatever you decide to paint. Now, I have had this set in my shop for about half a year and I have shipped it all over the world, which is just amazing <laughs> that so many are interested in my take on what is Swedish. So we have uh, a few ochres. Uh, we also have some red iron oxide, which is this sort of fall red, we call it. Also have a very granulating green just to get that sort of um, a little bit of foliage around the house. So I designed this set specifically to be able to be able to paint the houses. And this is the first um, painting I did with the colors. They were not even uh, like complete when I did this, but this is what I had in mind, what I wanted to paint and the colors I uh, that I decided to bring into the set is to help to get this look. So I wanted a light green that granulated a lot so I could get a lot of texture around the houses, uh, but also be able to use it as doors and that kind of stuff. So this is the red that I've used. Also we have um, a red ochre. I've used it a lot on the roofs. We have a yellow ochre that is very, very common too. Uh, the green we talked about. We also have this blue that is ultramarine. And um, it's not that common, like you don't see blue houses, but it's definitely there. And it's also in this one there is a uh, um, Disa, it's called Dove Blue in Swedish, and I think it's called something similar in uh, uh, in Norway. But yeah, you definitely see this quite a lot. And then we have these two, so we have a raw umber, and we also have a very, very granulating, <laughs> um, very granulating color right here, and um, I wanted this to be able to make like uh, the foundations often made of stone or on the roof if you have a darker roof so yeah that is why I decided on these colors now I hardly ever use colors straight from the pan <laughs> and that is true from these two so I thought I was going to show how I will use it but also how I mix them to get uh, a lot of variations when I do these kind of paintings. Okay, so um, today I thought I was going to use uh, one of these. I get them from Jackson's when I order. I typically pick up a, a few of these sample packs. Uh, I think they are great. Now these are Legion 
in different papers, different colors, and you pick them up and they are they are about six and a half by nine and a half and that is two and a half inches by three and almost four inches. I don't know what you call that. So you have a lot of different, here I have one that is a hot press, we have one that is warm white, we have a black one, a white one, cotton, These, and this one has different colours, very fun. Uh, here we have some Yupo paper, they are translucent. Uh, and this is Yupo but super super heavy. So yeah, you can get a lot of these very cheaply and I really love these because uh, well, first of all, of course, you can sort of check out the paper and see if you like them. But also, I really like them because I like to make little projects and I think a pad of these are just perfect for making like we're going to do today. Um, so I think I want to try out this warm white. I haven't tried this one before. And I'm going to grab a pencil and I want I want a very soft lead because I like getting those rich black lines and before we start I'm just going to sharpen my pen here. So I'm going to use a Faber-Castell 9000 series um, 8B. Okay. So here we go, and this paper looks really nice. Now what direction you decide to paint in is, is up to you. Uh, I think I'm going to just look at the houses I've done before and take some inspiration. I often look up a Torp on uh, Pinterest and um, uh, make a board of that to get them but then more often than not I change the houses <laughs> um, just for fun but I think that when you have done so many then you sort of know what kind of qualities you like or don't like and you can sort of shift the uh, the elements around where you want them and also move the house around on your paper to get what you like and uh, for me that is the fun part so I'm just going to make this little house here. It's going to have a glass in porch. And let's see, I think we need a window down here. Definitely a yeah, kitchen window here. Oh, a chimney. We always have chimneys because otherwise we would freeze to death in Sweden. That is the truth. Something like that, but we also need some some form of stepping stone here or stairs like that and we always have a ladder on the roof so you can get up to the chimney and then I also want to have some of that um, growing so I'm just going to indicate where I want maybe some bushes maybe we have like a big tree here and then in the summer it casts a lot of shade over the house and then you might sit on there, a cup of coffee, a bit of sponge, yeah, I think I like that, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to fix my roof here. Now, this is a, I mean, a very small dimension, of course. So, I would say go either two ways. Either just paint over and then come in later with the white. Um, because it is tricky to save the white here. Or use masking fluid. But for the sake of this video, I will just 
um, try my best, I think will be the best option here. Okay, so we have something like that. I'm going to pick um, a very narrow brush because we don't need a lot of surface here. Or we don't need to cover a lot of surface, I mean to say. So I'm just going to take this. Um, I used to have these in the shop, but they have sold out. So, yeah, no more. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to start with is this um, uh, Marie, which is a red iron oxide. And I'm just going to go around and trying my best to see if I can save a little bit of white, but uh, it's it's tricky. I mean, it's small places and I also have pretty shaky hands. So I'm going to do that. Now, uh, this colour dries a lot darker than it goes down, but I also want to make sure that I don't have just one like like one tone. So I'm going to go in a little bit with Tecla, which is a red ochre. And I do that just to get some variation. And depending on like what day it is or what weather it is, we have a bit of variation. Or maybe this house hasn't been painted in forever and the colour has starting to fade. So I just want to I have a little bit of variation. Okay, uh, and I imagine this house has been standing here a really long time, like most of the houses have, and it's starting to get old and you know, you, you should really change the paneling and the roof and all of that. Um, so that is the look I'm going for. I'm going to cover the house with Tecla again. And this color is definitely inspired by sort of the roof uh, the colour of the roof that we have. I'm going to take a bit of Gusta, which is the green colour here, and I just want to add a tiny bit here on the roof to sort of indicate that it's starting to, that you need to like, if not change it, but at least clean it. I'm doing the same on this little porch roof. I'm going to like that, and then a little bit of green here too. And this is why I wanted this colour to granulate, so you can really get that texture. Now, we're coming up here to the house, or to the front, and I really want that to be white, because that's usually how we do with the porches. So what I want is just having a darker colour to sort of do that shadow. So I'm just going to take some Svea, which is an ultramarine, and then I'm going to use Stig, which is the raw umber, and I'm just going to mix them together. And this will create a cool grey, depending on how much of each you mix in. But I just want to add in a little bit of shadow here, and then some panelling here. It could be windows or just panelling. But just some shadows. For the doors I'm going to use Disa which is that traditional light blue grey we have like so. Okay and then just to get a little bit of context I'm going to go in here with, with Gustav again over where I want the green part and I'm going to just go in with a clean brush and wet and I'm going to let that flow out. And that way I can get some texture both from the uh, colour and also from the actual uh, technique. And I'm going to do the same here on the, on the trees. And by doing it this I'm going to get a background colour that is very very soft but it still tells something and you still have the focus on your house. Okay. 
Now I'm going to let this dry before I'm going in with the windows. Have If this uh, painting was had been a bit bigger, I would have a bit more room, but I don't want this to start bleeding, so I'm going to let it dry. And while this is drying, I'm hoping we can take this off. Oh, oh okay. And we can start a new one. So this time I'm thinking I want to do it this way because I want to show you um, a technique to get like to make it look like there are the old wood paneling. So we need to have a little bit of a bigger house. Okay, so I'm going to paint this house from the side. And I'm going to exaggerate a little bit just so we have a little bit more room. So imagine something like this. And then we have the uh, entrance going in here instead on the side. And again we have those stepping stone and then we have the door here. And just regular traditional windows. And typically I would just draw in the wood. I do like when we, there is more, but it doesn't matter. So, spacing it out better. Okay, something like that instead. And we can add some details here in the door. Uh, maybe we have some windows in the door typically do and um, yeah I think that's nice okay so in here we're going to do the same I'm going to go in with the Marie this time I'm going to go in quite lightly and totally forget I was going to have white anyway <laughs> Uh, now, I'm very proud of these paints that I've made. They are very pigmented, as you can, as you can tell. Um, but it also means that when you're working on small, on these kind of small projects, you need to be quite careful. Because, especially uh, this one, which is an opaque uh, pigment, it can dom take over so quickly. So that is just something I need to remember. And especially now, I have to say, I'm having a bit of a hard time because uh, my hand is pretty tired and a bit shaky. And also this paper is new. Okay, so what I like to do is add a bit of effect. And by effect, I just mean a bit of background, back run. <laughs> Uh, where I just add water when I see it starting to dry. I'm adding a little bit of water so that it will run back and that will create some texture. And I personally love that. Uh, not everybody do, but I feel like when you have something um, pretty realistic and, uh, and all of that, I think that is kind of fun when you have a big flat surface to go in with a bit of fun water. Uh, with a fun wash. So that is just perf personal preference. Uh, I do it depending on the size I'm working on and how much detail I'm putting into the house. Uh, I can show you here. So I'm repainting the houses I have here. So this is the house I'm working on right now and I really like because it just is pretty empty so I can add in that background and get that sort of a bit of an effect. Whereas the house we just did was a version of this one. I don't have that much real estate to work because you can see um, the big part of the house is taking up at the front porch. So then I really won't do it because then it would just be too much. But for example here I can add in something to break up. Uh, it's just plain space. Okay. <laughs> Artistic reasoning. I don't know if that is such a thing but... Okay, we're going to add in some green because 
olive green. So I'm just going to add in here. And that is also a really great way if you want to establish more on the white outside. So if I had here, I could just go out with green on this side right here if I wanted to, and that could create my white border around the house. So I'm just trying to make sure that I'm mostly concentrating where I want the leaves to actually grow and then using um, pretty much just water to bring it down and that will create a more flowy effect. Okay, going in a little bit here. So if I just stay away from that edge, I can get that white that I didn't uh, did before. I'm going to go in here in the stian, which is that very, very granulating color. And I'm just going to fill in here the steps and also the foundation of the house. And because I have that fondness of having these houses look really old, I'm going to go in with a little bit of Gustav here and just make it look like uh, it's been a bit mossy over the years. Okay. Now I'm going to go in uh, for the windows while the house is drying. And my favorite way to go in with the windows is making them darker. And personal preference, once again, I mean, if you go in with yellow, it looks like there's some uh, a light shining from the house, which is really cool, especially if you have a dark background. Um, I tend to just go in with a darker tone. So what I do is I go with Svea. And then Marie. Now, like I said, uh, Marie has a tendency to just take over and pays no attention to anybody else. <laughs> so, yeah, especially now when I've been painting with it, it's uh, very soft. Okay, so here we have a very, very dark blue now. So that is the windows. I tried to add a little bit of white so you can have that little bit of shine. But Okay, so it is dry and we're going to continue on with that texture. So the texture is really, really easy. I'm going to take Marie. I'm going to put it here on my palette. I'm going to water it down a bit because I want a nice flow on my brush now. Now, is the, the green here is still wet. Uh, and like I said, my hand is shaky. So we're going to see how it goes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to go over. Like that. And that is, I would say, the most common or traditional um, sort of way you can see the houses. But if you do it the other way, like I have done here, on this one, you get a more uh, sort of log cabin look where instead of having boards going horizontal, you get them vertical. No, this other way around, sorry. Um, vertical and this one is horizontal. And you can get that sort of log cabin look instead. Uh, I think we need a little bit of texture on the door. It looks very bland. I mean, it can still be white but it's traditional something more on the door. So I'm just going to add some texture here and maybe a little bit of shadowing here. And that is that same color I used before, just Svea mixed with Stig. Okay, if we now go back to this little house, what I want to add in are the windows. I also want to add in a little bit more texture on the roof. So if we start with the windows, I'm going to add the same mixture I did before. I'm just going to dilute it a bit more and add in. Like that. And then I'm just going to take Tecla and going to like that. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of texture here. 
something like that. And I think we need a little bit of steel just here on the steps of the house. And maybe they have a bit of walk up through the house. Okay, so here we have another house. And um, here I think um, this house is in direct sunlight, is my vision of it anyway. So I'm going to start with Tekla, the red ochre. And I'm just going to go in here. Now, not all houses in Sweden are red, obviously. I mean, that would be odd. <laughs> but there is definitely quite a lot of red houses and, and yellow houses, I would say. Okay, and we can do another kind of roof. Maybe this one has a grass roof. We don't have that many houses that are, what do you call it, like living houses or like year round houses that have grass roofs, but definitely still some summer cottages has grass roofs. Uh, I have lived in a cottage with grass roofs and you don't really notice a difference except it's very cute and you can get some uh, stuff in your hair when you walk in. <laughs> And then having a little bit of grass or moss has trickled down here too. Uh, the windows, of course. Now, depending on how big of a, a section that you are painting with this combination of Svea and Marie, you can get a really fun texture or variation because um, ultramarine blue that this color is is a granulating color and if you do a bigger surface you can get some really cool granulation um, with this so yeah and you can definitely see it on the palette that they're sort of looking like they're separating and I just I my heart gets so happy when that kind of stuff happens so and I think um, the ones who live in this house they uh, have a yellow door and that is painted with yellow ochre. I actually watched a um, gem from the Color Cave uh, and she is um, Scottish and um, she says ochre in a different way, like the correct way because ochre is very like the the spelling or the pronunciation is very common in Scotland or something or something with lock Lux, something, I don't know. Uh, but I'm just saying, like, I'm Swedish, so I, I don't need to take part in uh, in that thing. Uh, I say ochre, <laughs> because in Swedish it's okra, so. Okay, I'm going to use Stian again, because I really love that granulation. And I really like that, even though this is very... Uh, I don't know if it's said what kind of paper it is. Um... Well, it just said it has a smooth, a smooth surface, and that is definitely true. Um, it's definitely it feels more hot press than cold press. But anyway, and what I like about this color in particular is that it still granulates, even though it is so so smooth. Um, typically, the more um, the more texture you have on your surface, the more the granulation will show through. And I'm so happy that it still granulates on this surface because it is granulates so so heavily okay i'm going to add in a little bit of green around the house here because i love that and i especially like when we you do this kind of stuff because the color is opaque and if you have a little bit of shift you can see it much clearly clearly much clearer okay a little bit more orange here on the roof i think 
and we have this color on our roof and our roof is pretty green so I can definitely testify to that <laughs> actually I think all like on my all my uncles and my grandmother all have these kind of houses so yeah so that is another house okay so here we have three houses painted with the Almoga set and I hope this you have liked it this little video here um, this is what I had in mind when I created this set and I would love to see how you use it and what you paint with it um, I just feel so so incredibly happy that I can make an eight piece watercolor set <laughs> I mean eight colors just to be able to paint this kind of stuff like this specifically and people will still buy it uh, yeah I don't know I just feel very very happy and lucky that uh, it turned out so well well anyway uh, you can now found both the set and you can find the individual colors in the shop uh, most of them are in both full pan and half pan so if you want a bigger size I know um, some of the colors sell out more quickly than others uh, but also what I want to mention is that now I only have the half pants because these colors are like the samples I I did when I was taking out the colors but if you want to paint bigger like on bigger pieces of paper and you you work with bigger brushes uh, I would recommend getting the half pan or <laughs> Uh, I would recommend getting the full pan just to make it easier for your brushes to get more pigments um, and you also uh, are, you're kinder to your brush if you have bigger pans for bigger brushes so that you don't wear out the hairs for rubbing around uh, that's just something but like I said this is my tester uh, tester pants <laughs> Uh, yeah, so anyway, thank you so much. I hope you've liked this video uh, giving you some inspiration I hope that you will give me some inspiration tagging me when you uh, either paint houses or Using my colors. I would love to see that. So thank you so much for watching and uh, I hope to see you on Saturday for a studio vlog and uh, Yeah, bye